right? Uh, then the Brahmin student Subha, Todeya's son, went to the Blessed One and exchanged greetings with him. When this courteous and amiable talk was finished, he sat down at one side and asked the Blessed One, Master Gautama, what is the cause and condition why human beings are seen to be inferior and superior? For people are seen to be short-lived and long-lived, sickly and healthy, ugly and beautiful, uninfu uninfluential and influential, poor and wealthy, low-born and high-born, stupid and wise. What is the cause and condition, Master Gautama, why human beings are seen to be inferior and superior? So this is how this sutta starts. Thus have I heard. As you know, this is uh, uh, recorded uh, by Venerable Ananda. The suttas recorded by Venerable Ananda start in this way. Thus have I heard. In Pali, evang me sutang. So most of the suttas in Sutta Pitaka are uh, the recordings or reporter, uh, uh, reports of Venerable Ananda, who used to be the personal attendant to the Buddha. So after the Buddha's passing away, in the first uh, Buddhist canon, Patama Sangayana, the first Sangayana, Venerable Ananda was the person who was in charge of the sutras, discourses, because he is the one who knew all the sutras preached by the Buddha in his present as well as in his absence because when he was appointed as the um, personal attendant to the Buddha, he had this uh, condition, which is that uh, Buddha has to preach a discourse that he preached in Venerable Ananda's absence. So if Venerable Ananda was not there, when they met together, uh, maybe uh, later that day, Buddha would preach the same sutta to Venerable Ananda and Venerable Ananda could remember it exactly as the Buddha preached. So he is well known uh, to be, uh, to um, have had this uh, 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 sharp memory or what we call this uh, photographic memory who could remember exactly in the same way that he uh, listened. So all the suttas uh, which are recorded afterwards by Venerable Ananda start in this way, thus have I heard, O Evang Me Sutan. So this is also one of those uh, sutras. So this happened. There is a particular incident which happened as recorded in this sutta. So this happened uh, when the Blessed One was living uh, at Savati in Jethas Grove, Anathapindika's Park. Now this is uh, from among the places where Buddha uh, dwelt or resided. This is the most famous place where Buddha resided, one of, one of the monasteries uh, built and offered to Buddha by this person called uh, Anatha Pindika. It was situated or it was uh, built in this uh, uh, grove or park called Jethas Park. All these places are in India. So uh, one day there was uh, this Brahmin youth, or as it says here, student Subha, Brahmin student Subha, his father was Todeya. There's a nice story behind too in this, uh, uh, behind this person. So if we uh, find time, we will uh, uh, see the story as well. So this uh, student or Brahmin student, this youth, young person called Subha, his name was Subha. His father's name was Todeya, who was a Brahmin. And uh, after the uh, demise, passing away of uh, this Brahmin father, Todeya, son, uh, son Subha, came to be the household. So this Subha, this youth um, Subha one day came to meet the Buddha, to see the Buddha. He went to the Buddha. Uh, uh, Blessed one is the term normally used in uh, most of these suttas uh, to address the Buddha or to refer to the Buddha, Blessed one. And first of all, they exchanged greetings to each other. And when all these greetings and amiable talks uh, finished, he sat down at one side and asked the Blessed One this question. So he had this question. Subha had this question. He was wondering. He had um, uh, this question in his mind. Uh, nobody could give him 
a satisfying answer to this question. Most probably, Subha must have gone to other teachers as well because before he became uh, uh, or before he uh, became friendly or before he uh, uh, trust the blessed one Buddha, he was a Brahmin, so he must have had uh, gone to other teachers and asked this question, but nobody had uh, given him a, a satisfying answer. So this day he came to the Buddha and asked this question. So his question was this, Master Gautama, what is the cause and what is the condition? Why human beings are seen to be inferior and superior? For people are seen to be short-lived and long-lived, sickly and healthy, ugly and beautiful, uninfluential and influential, poor and wealthy, low-born and high-born, stupid and wise. What is the cause and condition? So his curiosity or his uh, question, what he was wondering about is this differences, differences between the people, between the human being, these inequalities, human beings are not equal. There are people who are um, living long and there are some people, some beings who are living a short life. They die uh, prematurely or live in a short life. And there are some people who are very healthy and there are some people who are very sickly and ugly and beautiful. So these are the terms he had used and these are the terms actually as uh, it has been translated from the uh, original one, original text. Ugly and beautiful, uninfluential and influ influential, poor and wealthy, low born and high born. So, you know, at that time uh, in India, there were castes and there were classes and different things which uh, sort of uh, divided the society, the people. So his question uh, generally is that, what is the cause and condition for all these so-called differences or all these uh, divisions, all these uh, inequalities? So what is the cause and condition? Is there any force behind all these things? Why uh, it happens in this way? So that was the question asked by this uh, Brahmin youth or Brahmin student, Subha, from the Blessed One, from the Buddha. So Buddha uh, answers the question, student, beings are owners of their actions, heirs of their actions, they originate from their actions, are bound to their actions, have their actions as their refuge. It is action that distinguishes beings as inferior and superior. So Buddha answered the question, saying that student, beings, human beings are owners of their actions. So this word is very important here, actions. So this is the um, translation of karma or karma in Sanskrit. Karma is the Pali term. So Buddha says, student beings are owners of their actions, of their deeds, what they do, heirs of their actions. So they are the heirs of their own actions. And uh, uh, they originate from their actions, are bound to their actions, have their actions as their refuge. It is action that distinguishes beings as inferior and superior. So Buddha said, the uh, driving force, the uh, crucial cause and condition behind all these differences, all these divisions, uh, what distinguishes beings into uh, inferior or superior, high or low, healthy or sick, poor or rich, short-lived or long-lived. It is uh, actions, their own actions. So he uses uh, these different terms to show the um, very strong relationship between uh, one's own actions and oneself. So Buddha says, beings are owners of their actions, heirs of their actions. They originate from their actions. They are bound to their actions and have uh, their own actions as their refuge. And it is action that distinguishes beings 
as inferior or su uh, superior. So this is the answer given uh, by the blessed one to Subha's question. So Buddha says, um, in general, what is the cause and what is the condition and what is the force behind these differences, these divisions, these inequalities is beings own actions or their own deeds or own, their own karmas, whatever they do. It can be the, um, uh, their own, uh, uh, their own refuge, their own uh, heirs, and they are the owners of their uh, actions and action is the one from which they originate and all these things. Uh, beings are uh, distinguished by their own actions. So that is the answer given by the Buddha to uh, Subha's question. But Subha did not fully understand what Buddha was saying and he couldn't understand uh, very well uh, this answer. So uh, Subha says, I do not understand in detail the meaning of Master Gautama's statement, which he spoke in, uh, in brief without expounding the meaning in detail. It would be good if Master Gautama would teach me the Dhamma so that I might understand in detail the meaning of Master Gautama's statement. So Subha says, Subha being an ordinary uh, youth, uh, Brahmin student, he could not understand very well what the Buddha was saying, his brief answer. Even though his question is a big one in his mind, Buddha gave him just very general, very brief answer. Buddha said it is just karma. Karma is their uh, own, karma is their refuge, karma is their uh, air, and everything is karma. So that is karma which distinguishes beings into being uh, inferior or superior. So Subha says, uh, Master Gautama, I do not understand your brief answer. It would be good if Master Gautama can teach me, expound this, elaborate this answer in detail so that I can understand, I can remember it and I can understand, I can find answers to my questions. So then Buddha says, then student listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, sir, the Brahmin student Subha replied, the blessed one, said this. So this is how the expounding, the um, in detail answer to that particular uh, question starts. Upon his request, Buddha uh, gives him in detail, or Buddha expounds the um, in detail answer to this question to show how these differences, these divisions, uh, how or what distinguishes and how uh, people are being distinguished by their own karmas and what are the certain certain karmas then uh, that give certain certain results consequences and all these things come afterwards in this uh, sermon starting from this point onward so this is how uh, this sermon or this discourse starts Okay, let's uh, read the next part too. Here, student, some man or woman kills living beings and is murderous, bloody handed, given to blows and violence, merciless to living beings. Because of performing and undertaking such action on the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. But if on the dissolution of the body after death, he does not reappear in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, in hell, but instead comes back to the human state. Then wherever he is reborn, he is short-lived. This is the way, student, that leads to short life, namely one kills living being, living beings and is murderous, bloody-handed, given to blows and violence merciless to living beings. So Buddha starts to uh, elaborate or expound in detail his brief answer. And firstly, he says, uh, the reason or why, the reason or the cause and condition why some beings are short-lived. Buddha says, if 
a man or a woman kills living beings and not only that if the person is murderous bloody handed given to blows and violence merciless to living beings because of that particular action because of that particular karma that a man or a woman performs or commits as a result two things can happen the first thing is that person might after the death Uh, reappear or reborn in a state of deprivation in an unhappy realm unhappy destination it could be even perdition even in hell that could be one uh, result or one con- consequence or if that person is not reborn in a, uh, such a place if the person is reborn in the or among the human beings in the human realm as a result of his uh, previous action or previous karma which is killing and being murderous and being violent uh, that can be a reason that can be the cause and condition why that person is short lived as a result so that is buddha says that is what the buddha says uh, firstly answer in his question so that is the cause and condition why some beings are short lived Uh, the cause and condition behind that reason is being murderous being uh, violent being bloody handed and uh, committing uh, the killing of living beings so that is the cause and condition this is the way student that leads to short life namely uh, one kills living beings and is murderous bloody hand that given to blows and violence merciless to living beings but here student some man or a woman abandoning the killing of living beings abstains from killing living beings with rod and weapon laid aside gentle and kindly he abides compassionate to all living beings because of performing and undertaking such action on the dissolution of the body after death he reappear in a happy destination even in the heavenly world but if one on uh, but if one uh, on the dissolution of the body after death he does not reappear in the happy destination in the heavenly world but instead comes back to the human state then wherever he is reborn he is long lived so buddha says uh, the other part of his question why beings are short lived that was the reason why beings are long lived buddha says uh, this can be this could be the reason uh, the reason is uh, abandoning the killing not killing instead uh, being uh, compassionate and kind to all living beings and not undertaking or not performing uh, such actions that is killing or not being murderous or not being violent so as a result on the dissolution of the body uh, after death he or that person might reappear in a happy destination even in a heavenly world but if that does not happen if that person is reborn in the heaven, uh, in the human realm as a result of uh, being compassionate kind to all living beings as a result of developing kindness Uh, kind thoughts and kind mind uh, wherever he is so wherever the person is reborn as a result of uh, that good karma in this uh, uh, in this occasion he will live a long life he will uh, live a long time so that is the way student that leads to long life namely abandoning the killing of living beings one abstains from killing living beings and with rod and weapon lay aside gentle and kindly one abides compassionate to all living beings so that is that could be the reason and cause and condition for some beings to have a long life because they have never killed or they have abstain from killing they have put aside rod and weapon and violent and violence and all these things instead they are um Uh, gentle and kind to uh, all living beings um, they had been compassionate to all living beings as a result they will have a 
long lifetime if they are born in uh, the human realm or it could be uh, they reappear in a happy place or heavenly realm too so that could be the cause and condition so that is the first part of uh, the buddha's answer to um, subha's question and next part so that is how buddha resolved the first uh, part of the question why some beings are short lived and why some beings are long lived so those could be the reason and next buddha says here student some uh, some man or a woman is given to inj injuring beings with the hand with a clod with a stick or with a knife because of performing and undertaking such action on the dissolution of the body after death he reappears in a state of deprivation even in hell but if instead he comes back to the human state then wherever he is reborn he is sickly this is the way student that leads to sickliness namely one is given to injuring being beings with the hand with the clod with the stick or with the knife so this could be the reason why some uh, why some beings can be sickly so this is the next part of his answer okay so when you uh, hear these things if you haven't read the complete the sutta completely you might now come to some conclusion could these things uh, happen in this way so if anybody uh, gets sick is it uh, is it the um, is the cause is uh, uh, some person being you know violent or some has done some injuries to other things so do not um, do not you know um, get come to conclusion or do not uh, uh, be quick to jump into conclusion because uh, we need to uh, discuss more as i said at the beginning uh, this sutta uh, is all about karma but this is not the only place and only sutta that buddha has spoken about the karma and this uh, uh, and the theory of karma or how buddha has explained the karma uh, we need to uh, we should see and uh, read and study other uh, suttas where uh, buddha has also spoken about karma so um, this is just one uh, occasion that buddha is speaking about this particular topic so here buddha says uh, a, a cause and condition for some beings to be sickly is that uh, a man or a woman um, injuring beings with hand not killing but injuring being you know harmful uh, doing harmful things not to the extent of killing but uh, below that injuring with hand or with a clod or with a stick or with whatever um, a weapon or a tool with a knife so uh, as a result if that it could be um, uh, either the person uh, will reappear in unhappy destination if that does not happen if the person is reborn in the human realm as a result that can bring him uh, sickness and also buddha says but here student some man or woman is not given to injuring beings with the hand with a clod with a stick or with a knife because of performing and undertaking such action on the dissolution of the body after death he reappears in a happy destination but if instead he comes back to the human state then wherever he is reborn he is healthy this is the way student that leads to health namely one is not given to injuring beings with the hand with the clod with a stick or with a knife so the uh, good part of it the good side the wholesome side of that karma of injuring others is again abstaining or abandoning uh, injuring beings with whatever uh, by whatever means so instead of that again being compassionate or abstaining from uh, injuring other beings as a result that person might reappear in a happy place happy realm even in a heavenly realm if that does not happen if that person um, 
comes back to the human state, human realm, as a result, that person might enjoy good health as a result of that particular uh, good or wholesome karma. So that is uh, the next part of uh, the Buddha's answer to Subha's question. Okay, let's continue. Here, student, some man or a woman is of an angry and irritable character. Even when criticized a little, he is offended, becomes angry, hostile, and resentful, and displays anger, hate, and bitterness. Because of performing and undertaking such action, he reappears in a state of deprivation, or even he might go to uh, very unhappy realms, even to hell. But if instead he comes back to the human state, then wherever he is reborn, he is ugly. This is the way, student, that leads to ugliness. Namely, one is of an angry and irritable character and displays anger, hate, and bitterness. So there's a certain hierarchy you might notice. Uh, he started with you know, highest degree uh, karma that is killing, and then he moves to uh, other ones. Uh, been um, uh, sort of uh, injuring others, not killing. And then he comes to the next one and says, uh, being angry, or if somebody gets um, angry or anger uh, and um, hateful, uh, if a person gets uh, anger, even if uh, for a very small uh, minor reason, um, becomes angry and hostile and resentful and displays anger, uh, hate and bitterness for, for a, even a small slight reason. So because of performing that action or that karma, it can cause that person to be reborn in an unhappy place. But instead, if he comes back to the human realm, human state, as a result of being uh, hostile and angry all the time and displaying anger and getting angry for very small reasons. As a result, that person uh, can be ugly. So that is the term used here uh, as the translation. That means uh, not you know, uh, having uh, maybe good look. So that is the uh, result or consequence of being uh, angry and displaying anger all the time, being resentful and hostile to other people. And then Buddha says, but here students, some man or woman is not of an angry and irritable character. Even when criticized a lot, he is not offended, does not become angry, hostile and resentful, does not display anger, hate and bitterness because of performing and undertaking such action, he reappears in a happy destination, or he might even go to or reappear in a very happy destination, such as a heavenly realm. But if, but if instead he comes back to the human state, then wherever he is reborn, he is beautiful. He would have a very good, uh, handsome, pretty look. This is the way, student, that leads to being beautiful, namely, one is not often angry an irritable character does not display anger, hate, and bitterness. So that is the cause and condition which might be, which could be the reason for some person, for some beings to have good look or bad look, being angry and not being angry. Okay, so in this way, Buddha continues to answer and uh, resolve the big uh, question in detail of this uh, Brahmin youth Subha. And at this point, I would like to come to our audience and see if we have any comments or if anybody wants to uh, ask a question um, about the uh, things that we have so far uh, read and discussed.
Bhante, what's the Pali word for action? Uh, kamma. Kamma. Yes. Kamma. kamma. The Pali word for action is Kamma. The Sanskrit version is Karma, which is, uh, you know, which has been uh, adapted or uh, taken in English vocabulary as well as in Sinhalese, we, we say karma. The Pali word for action is kamma, K-A-M-M-A. And can I ask you a question, please? Please. Yeah, I, I was just, I've been thinking about it. You know, the book written by Narada Mahathera, the Buddha and his teaching. Yeah, he, in that he said, everything is not due to karma. There are 24 other causes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, he, he said refer to this one, but I couldn't find the reference. He said there are 24 other causes which determines what we are now. You are muted. Oh, you can, can you hear me now? Yes. Now I can hear you. Early, yeah. Yeah. The Narada Mahathera said everything is not due to karma. Karma is one, only one of the causes, 24 causes. And he said you can refer to his other book to find out what are those 24 causes. I tried to find it in the internet, but I couldn't find it. Okay, yes. Yeah, that's correct. So karma is not the uh, only reason uh, for anything. Now, if we take uh, the things that we have so far read in this uh, sutta, uh, to be sick or to be healthy or to uh, live long or to live short, karma is not the only reason. So we will discuss these things uh, as we uh, continue the discussion, okay. karma is just only one reason. Okay. So Buddha never says karma is the only reason. Okay. So okay. that's Thank why I Bante. said, Maybe yeah, we should not, uh, yeah, we should not hurry uh, uh, to, uh, you know, come to or jump into conclusions because uh, Buddha has never said karma is the only reason. But there are, uh, we will discuss, I, I uh, hope to discuss these things uh, in this uh, 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 okay. class okay. and uh, when we uh, talk about this sutta, that, sorry, sorry uh, what to... are the yeah. um, uh, the theories of uh, contemporary teachers at the Buddha's time and also what are the other theories about karma and how Buddha proved and showed very clearly that those theories or those uh, uh, interpretations are wrong and very clearly showed Karma is not the only reason. And also, karma is not something which is permanent. It is yeah. also impermanent. So it can change. And we can change our karma. We can sort of change or we can, we have com complete um, uh, control. There are some uh, exempts to some exceptional karmas that we cannot change. But uh, by and large, we can uh, change and we can influence Karma is something also uh, impermanent. So here Buddha never says that uh, if somebody uh, lives short, karma yeah. is the Just only karma. reason, right? Karma can be a, a one cause and condition for that thing, but there could be other reasons too, as uh, it uh, said in that book that you referred to. Uh, there are other reasons too. So. But Buddha shows here, not only in this uh, sutta, but in other sutras, there are other reasons. And also karma is something uh, impermanent. You can change your karma and all these things. I think Samantha uh, has raised her hand. Samantha, do you want to speak? Uh, yes, Bhante. Yeah. I, was, I was just thinking, um, so this um, karma, uh, that is that linked also to the, um, it comes in the Sankara element of the five aggregates so that um, your, you know, they say that your intentions, they should be wholesome actions, you know, moving forward. And that's in one area. And then there's also in the 
I suppose in the dependent origination as well, because you've got cause and effect there. So it seems to be creeping in. I'm, I'm sure there are other areas I'm not sure of as well. Uh, so in various parts of the Dhamma, um, is that all then linked and it's not just a direct karma? Yeah, that's correct. They are linked. Now, uh, 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 sankara or formation is another term used for karma. And sankara uh, means some other things as well, but sankara is another term for uh, on karmas, good and bad. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they are they are linked. So, uh, even in Patit um, Saupada, the dependent origination, mm -hmm. um, there is this karma. When we say uh, sankara, it can be uh, our own karmas, the good and bad karmas that we perform. So they are linked. There is a link uh, to karma in uh, all those uh, teachings. Mm. So the karma appears in different sort of like guy, dis uh, guys, uh, disguises in the Dhamma. Now, yes. Right yeah. Around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, when we uh, when we consider this particular teaching, karma. Now, uh, Buddha has spoken about this, so he has referred directly and indirectly to this karma. You can find we will find the sutras and teachings all over the pitaka, all over the sutta pitaka. So there are a number of places where he has referred to this. Mm. Thank you. Uh, okay, Prashant. Do do the actions have to be volitional? Yes, yeah. So the we will I will come to that uh, interpretation. The interpretation of the Buddha to karma. Buddha says uh, he he says um, he says exactly this. Intention I tell you is karma. Intending one does karma by way of body, speech, and intellect. So one action uh, to regard as a, you know um, karma that can produce some result. It has to be intentional. Unintent unintentional things are not taken as uh, karma, according to the uh, Buddha's interpretation. Mm -hmm. So what here we say as karma or action are all intentional actions. Mm -hmm. Well, Mante, I have a question. Yeah. Um, doesn't this so there there is no permanent soul that's what um, that's what buddhism teaches us but isn't there something similar to that because throughout all our previous lives we've been putting this it's like a like a it's like a permanent bank account we kind of we kind of put in put in put in good karma into this bank account we we do something bad and and you 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 get you get like a you get overdrawn basically and every time we even even when we die and we go on to a new being this thing goes with us it's like the, it's like a soul that follows us and the only end to that is nirvana so there is something so the buddha is asking us to believe that there is something that we can consider as self, which is a vessel for our karma, right? Yes. Now this is all uh, all our consciousness. Now, uh, uh, when we suppose that we do a, uh, we perform a karma or action, be it good or bad, wholesome or unwholesome, it is intentional. So everything starts in our consciousness, in our mind. The seed, and then we uh, perform it uh, either of these three ways: verbally, mentally, or physically. But the seed started or originated in our consciousness. Now that is in our consciousness. Now, as a result of that consciousness, which which arose, it can cause another thing. So, in that way, there there is a link, just like a chain. So that chain continues. Because the, 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 the consciousness that which arose in this particular moment is the uh, cause for the next one. And that one is cause for the next one. So in that way, this goes throughout the journey of our sansara. Now, suppose that in this very life, um, somebody uh, did a killing. So for that person to do that killing, 
he had the consciousness of killing killing con consciousness that killing consciousness uh, gives rise to the next uh, consciousness now it doesn't it does there's no guarantee that it can happen in this very life that consciousness now you can understand it in this way now if that thought registered in his uh, consciousness it can uh, come up and activate in some other life too so in that way whatever arose whatever arises in our consciousness um, gives rise to the next so in that way our consciousness is just like a chain so there is a link uh, of what we do today maybe tomorrow or maybe next year or maybe next life so that is how this karma continues from life to life okay so um, so our bodies disintegrate our mental processes disintegrate but this one thing which is like a store of karma accumulated over previous lifetimes yeah yeah it can, is um, yeah and continues with us so continues with us so, and so, that does so, not mean that they are permanent they it continues now suppose that uh, somebody carries some karma from his or her pre previous birth and if they activate and if they give their results in this life that's all that is finished and the karma that person accumulate in this life can continue to the next right now suppose that some somebody did a killing in this very life right so that is an unwholesome action unwholesome karma and he arose killing consciousness and that killing consciousness is there it is registered or it is there and that killing consciousness can bring its result suppose that it brought its result in this very life that's over that is finished but that that does not mean that person has no other karmas he has lot more plenty more other karmas good and bad so they also have to bring their results some there are some karmas that do not bring results but still as long as one accumulates karmas his journey continues when somebody attains the nibbana when somebody uh, goes to the final liberation when somebody becomes enlightened that person does not accumulate any new karmas so that is the end of the sansar as long as you go there you always accumulate karmas and they uh, can last short or long and they bring their results and go away but still you on daily basis every time you uh, accumulate no new karmas so they uh, are with you uh, they can uh, go with the person or that that consciousness links continues okay thank you oh uh, bante yeah uh, sorry bante so uh, can i just uh, quickly cal clarify when bante said that karma is an intentional action um so a thought alone is that karma or does the thought have to be activated like you know say if i have a thought of uh, stealing and but i didn't do it uh, but then so what's the difference between that at karma is that a karma or if i think i'm going to steal and then i'm then going to go ahead and steal it yes now now if you if you take uh, one particular thing just like stealing or killing mm -hmm. uh, thought alone is not a karma there oh. are certain mental karmas now for example um, uh, abhijja or this covetousness is a uh, mental karma so covetousness arises in your mind activates in your mind you don't you 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 do nothing physically and verbally mm. it is mental alone mental only that is a mental karma but if you thought now i want to steal or i want to kill now this is the, the good example is killing now when we take killing there are five conditions to be met and fulfilled for an action to be a, a killing you have to have your thought you have to implement it you have to um, um, choose a strategy strategy there has to be a, another living being and you have to perform it and that person has to be killed when mm. all the five conditions are met only that becomes a karma mm. so that even if you had the thought of i want to kill this being or this that does not 
become a complete karma. But there are certain mental karma, such as covetousness. Covetousness arises in your mind, activates in your mind. That is mental only. You, you, you do nothing physically or, or verbally. Those are mental karmas. Mm -hmm. But these physical or verbal karmas, to be uh, complete, you have to implement it and uh, you have to see the result at, as well. To do that. So to get the result, you had to do an action, basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bante. Okay. Bante, yes. Um, if you, if you, if you think about killing, but you don't really perform the killing, but still, you commit not the killing uh, sort of thing, but you do you do some other uh, uh, unwholesome act right like uh, in order to killing that means you have a some sort of uh, 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 anger or uh, aversion right so that can cause uh, karma bad karma or unwholesome karma but not exactly the karma coming due to killing of an animal right yeah that is correct yeah that yeah. is correct uh, some some thoughts uh, uh, there is a, um, a difference of the degree yeah. uh, the yeah. amount of that karma because uh, even yeah. if you had the thought of uh, killing somebody you know uh, you might sometimes feel like killing or you know harming yeah. somebody because of your yeah. anger so that yeah. is not killing that is anger, anger that activates yeah. in your yeah. mind so anger yeah. is a mental thing just like you uh, we mm -hmm. we saw in this uh, yeah. sutta buddha says if somebody displays anger, uh, that itself can cause a, a result. So that is, yeah. you know, uh, the mm. result could be person being, you know, not good looking. So that can be a mental karma. Mm. But when it comes to these uh, physical and verbal karmas, uh, for those actions to be completed, yeah. you have to go through the process and yeah. complete them. But there are such, some karmas, as Buddha says in his interpretation to karma, Buddha says, uh, intention, I tell you, is karma. Intending one does karma by way of body, speech, and intellect. That means mind. Mm. So there yeah. are some mental karma too. Yeah. The other one is actually the translation action. It's, it's not correct for uh, uh, karma. Because in Buddhism, we have uh, uh, three types of action. Unwholesome action, wholesome action, and neutral action. Right? So yeah. the karma comes from unwholesome action and wholesome action, but not from uh, neutral action. Right? Now, if you go and uh, cook some rice, another action, but you don't... You don't uh, make unwholesome or wholesome uh, action, right? Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah that's correct, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's why uh, sometimes, you know, uh, yeah. when uh, people or uh, when people translate uh, Pali, they yeah. uh, remain with the uh, original term such as karma. Yeah. So, yeah. because when you uh, replace it with another word that might not give the um, real correct, meaning. Yeah. Real yeah. meaning, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I said this in this sutta, uh, they have used action um, for Pali word kam. Mm. Okay, let's continue and see uh, the next part of the sutta, next part of the Buddha's uh, answer to Subha. So Buddha says here next, but here students, some man or a woman is not uh, of an angry, we read that uh, paragraph 11. Yes, students, some man or a woman is envious, one who envies, resents, and begrudges the gains, honor, respect, reverence, salutations, and veneration received by others. Because of performing and undertaking such action, he reappears in a state of deprivation. But if instead he comes back to the human state, then wherever he is reborn, he is uninfluential. This is the way, student, that leads to being uninfluential. Namely, one is envious towards the gains and honor, respect and reverence, salutation and veneration received by others. So if person is uh, being envious 
envy, it's like jealousy of others' gains and uh, others' salutations, reverence, respect, states, or whatever, honor. So as a result, uh, if that person is uh, born among the human beings, uh, he can be an uninfluential person. And also it can, uh, this particular karma, this particular action, or this particular karma can cause uh, reappearance in unhappy places too. So that is being envious. And then Buddha says, if uh, uh, some man or woman is not envious, one who does not envy, resent and begrudge, the gains, honor, respect, reverence, salutation, and veneration received by others. Because of performing and undertaking such action, he reappears in, in a, ha a happy destination. But if instead he comes back to the human state, then wherever he is reborn, he is in, uh, influential, inf influential person as a result of not being envious of others' gains, honors, respect, not being uh, jealous of others' things, others gains, respect, honor, but instead respecting others gains and honors, um, uh, being refrained from or not having en uh, envy. As a result, that person can have a good rebirth in a happy place. But if that does not happen, if the person comes back to the human realm, that person can be uh, an influential person who can influence others as a result of being not envious. And then Buddha says, uh, some man or a woman does not give food, drink, clothing, carriages, garlands, scents, unguents, beds, dwellings, and lamps to recluses or Brahmins. Um, because of performing and undertaking such action, he reappears in a state of deprivation. Now this time, not being generous, not sharing, not giving. Uh, if that person is um, being uh, stingy, uh, not sharing, not giving, not offering. Uh, so Buddha says, as a uh, reason, he, he, he might uh, be reborn in an unhappy place. And if he came to the human realm, that person will be uh, poor. And uh, then Buddha says, some man or woman gives food and different things, shares. Uh, to those who are worthy of giving, uh, Brahmins or recluses. As a, as a result of performing such actions, that person might be reborn in a happy place, but if that person came back to the human world, that uh, person will be wealthy, he will enjoy uh, wealth. And then he says, that is the next part of the question, the way Buddha answered it. And next Buddha says, some man or a woman is uh, obstinate and arrogant. He does not pay homage to one who should receive homage, does not rise up for one uh, in whose presence he should rise up, does not offer a seat to one who deserves a seat, does not make way for one who, that means respecting. Uh, somebody who is um, worthy of respect, somebody who should be respected, somebody who deserves respect uh, in the proper way, in the right way. If person is uh, being uh, unrespectful, uh, not respecting those who are worthy of respect, Buddha says, as a result, uh, uh, that person might reborn in an unhappy place, and if that person comes back to the human realm, as a result, he can be born, uh, low born. He can be born in a uh, place or uh, uh, in a place where there's no any power, low born. And if a person uh, respects, Buddha says, pays homage to one who should receive homage, rises up, and uh, offers seed, that means in all the way, in all ways, that person respects those who um, should be respected. Buddha says, as a result, that person might reappear in a happy place, but if person comes back to the human realm, that person will uh, be, will have a high board, 
that means he will he will be born in a you know place and family which is you know high uh, family with uh, lots of powers and privileges and all these things high born and next part of the question buddha says um, some man or a woman does not visit a recluse or brahmin and ask venerable sir what is wholesome and what is unwholesome what is blameable and what is blameless that means uh, visiting the uh, those who are worthy of visit and get their advice uh, or listen to them if uh, those who uh, are wise uh as a result not doing that uh not um, learning from them not listening to their good advices uh, as a result he can be uh, born in an unhappy place but if that person comes back to the human realm he will uh, be born as stupid or unwise not intelligent but if one uh, visits and listens and learns from those who uh, are worthy of uh, listening to learning from and if a person learns and uh, 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 listens and um, get his uh, questions and uh, doubts cleared by them by listening to them by listening to teachers or those who are wise enough uh, to listen to as a result uh, buddha says that person can either have a good rebirth if not if person is born among the human realm in the human realm among the human beings uh, that person can be a wise person can be an intelligent person can have a good intelligence intellect and then uh, uh, so finally buddha says having resolved or having shown uh, these uh, different karmas or different actions both wholesome and unwholesome buddha says student the way that leads to short life makes people short lived the way that leads to long life makes people long lived the way that leads to sickliness makes people sickly the way that leads to health makes people healthy the way that leads to ugliness makes people ugly the way that leads to beauty makes people beautiful the way that leads to being uninfluential makes people uninfluential the way that leads to being influential makes people influential the way that leads to poverty makes people poor the way that leads to wealth makes people wealthy the way that leads to low birth people makes people low born the way that leads to high birth makes people high born the way that leads to stupidity makes people stupid the way that leads to wisdom makes people wise so there are certain karmas or actions or some, some intentional actions karmas that can lead to certain results certain uh, consequences that is what finally buddha says so and also he emphasize again beings are owners of their actions student heirs of their actions they originate from their actions are bound to their actions uh, and have their actions as their refuge it is action or karma that distinguishes beings as inferior and superior so when this was said suba uh, was uh, very satisfied and he was delighted and he uh, understood completely and he found answers to his question and uh, he requested uh, the buddha that buddha um, take him or accept him as a follower a lay follower of the buddha so that is how this sutta comes to an end so in this sutta uh, based on that question of this uh, brahmin youth called suba buddha gives a list of things list of intentional actions if one performs such and such action that can lead to such and such result uh, so that is uh, how buddha uh, answered this question now this chulla kamma vibhanga sutta is all about the karma and as i said and as i um, repeatedly mentioned this is not the only 
place and only discourse and only teaching of the Buddha that Buddha has spoken about uh, karma. And uh, as I said, there are teachings all over the Pitaka, all over the Sutra Pitaka and all over the Tripitaka canon where Buddha has mentioned and taught and referred to karma and different teachings uh, have uh, been given by the Buddha. So uh, at this point, and I would like to share this and we can further continue. So this is uh, the uh, Buddha's teaching about karma, this particular sutta. And as I said, karma, uh, there are two words. Karma is the Pali term for karma. And karma is the Sanskrit version, which has uh, been taken to other languages as well. So this is the Buddha's interpretation to karma. Buddha says, intention, I tell you, is karma. Intending, one does karma by way of body, speech, and intellect. By way of body, bodily, physically, or speech, that means verbally, and mentally. So in these three ways, one can perform, one can commit a karma. But all these things start in the mind, intention, volition. So if one does a karma, or an action uh, verbally, mentally, and physically, intentionally only, that can produce any result. So this is found in Anguttara Nikaya, uh, section 6, uh, 63rd in Anguttara Nikaya. This is called Nibbedika Sutta, penetrative, that is the translation, uh, in which Buddha has also uh, spoken about the karma. And uh, this is the interpretation given by the Buddha, the basic interpretation so that we can understand what uh, does karma or karma means. Or, so what is the interpretation according to the teachings of the Buddha to regard something, some action, verbal, physical or mental as a karma. So it has to be intentional, it has to be volitional. And also uh, when it comes to uh, the results, the Pali term for that is vipaka, karma and vipaka. Karma is the action, the intentional action that we perform, and its uh, uh, consequence or its result is called vipaka in Pali, the result of the karma. And um, in another sutta, Buddha says um, it is not uh, easy for somebody to understand the vipak of the karma. So that is found in uh, Anguttara Nikaya, section 4, uh, Achintya or Achintya Sutta, uh, imponderable. So Buddha says here, these four imponderables are not to be speculated about. Whoever speculates about them would go mad and experience vexation. There are four things. The first thing is Buddha range. The second thing is Jhana range. The fourth thing is the results of karma. So one cannot come to a uh, complete conclusion or one cannot completely understand how karma uh, reacts or how karma works and what are the uh, complete um, uh, reactions or vipakas of karma. That is something imponderable. If one um, things, if one tries to uh, think about the results of the karma. Now, this is Buddha talking about the ordinary beings, not somebody who is enlightened, because this is something uh, beyond our uh, understanding. Uh, that is why Buddha uh, names these four things, which are imponderables for the ordinary beings. One cannot you know, uh, perfectly understand as an ordinary being these four things, the range of the Buddha, the Buddha's powers and all these kind of things. And also the range of jhana, the powers of jhanas and all these things. And third thing is the results of karma. So that is something which can be perfectly understood by somebody who is maybe fully enlightened or enlightened. So if one tries to speculate uh, further and further about the results of the karma, it can um, lead to the person being you know confused 
and also in other uh, sutta um, this uh, another teaching is found this is very important there is this person who comes to see the buddha and uh, he says there are some brahmins and contemplatives who are of this doctrine this is this view whatever an individual feels pleasure pain neither pleasure nor pain is entirely caused by what was done before so having said that he asked now what does venerable gotama say to that does the buddha does gotama also say the same thing buddha says there are cases where some feelings arise based on bile there are cases where some feelings arise uh, based on film um, internal winds based on combination of bodily humors from change of the season from uneven uh, care of the body from attacks from results of come so it is actually the other teachers other um, religious traditions according to this sutta who said everything whatever one feel uh, pain or pleasure or neither pain or no pleasure is entirely caused by the karma but buddha says no there are other reasons too if one uh, feels pain or pleasure or neither pain or no pleasure it could be many reasons one of many reasons it could be internal things just like uh, uh, film or uh, bile or internal wind or something else and karma is only just one uh, one of those causes so karma is not the entire reason for everything that one might experience or one one uh, might feel so this is found uh, in uh, Sivaka Sutta, again, Sangyutta Nikaya, uh, another place where Buddha is uh, talking about karma. Uh, right. Uh, okay, so let's see uh, whether we have questions now before we uh, end the uh, discussion for the day. Uh, Bhante, you mentioned that you are going to tell us the story. Okay, let me tell you the story and quickly and then I'll, I'll come to your questions. I know uh, some uh, people want to ask questions. Now, this Subha was a Brahmin and his father was Todeya, another Brahmin. And Todeya, you know, Brahmins are not followers of the Buddha. So this Todeya was uh, a wealthy person, but he did not share. He was not generous. He was, an, he was a stingy person. So he accumulated uh, wealth more and more and he trained and he um, uh, encouraged his son Subha also to do the same thing and he was this Todeya was not uh, happy uh, with uh, the Buddha or his followers because uh, they encourage sharing dana and also they visit uh, uh, people's houses for you know getting some food and thing so Todeya was not happy and he was um, stingy and because Buddha encouraged sharing, whenever Buddha visited, Todeya used to accuse Buddha, saying uh, you uh, beg from other people without working and things. So, Todeya collected lots of uh, wealth and he died. And then eventually his uh, son Subha came to be the householder and upon the instruction of uh, his father, he also did the same thing. And according to the story, this is this is actually a story found not in the sutta, this is found in the commentary. So the story says, Todeya, this stingy man, uh, died and born in the same household as a dog, as a puppy. So this uh, puppy uh, used to be the, uh, uh, the, the favorite of uh, Subha. Subha loved a lot this puppy and he cared for him and he treated this puppy with the best food and he prepared the same room uh, as uh, he sleep on the same bed. So he cared for this puppy. And one day when Buddha was visiting, this puppy used to bark at the Buddha. So Buddha said, so he addressed uh, the puppy by his father's name, Todeya, because Buddha knew that this is the same person or this is the uh, rebirth of the uh, person. So he addressed uh, Papi uh, by name Todeya and said, Todeya, when, when, when you were living um, here as a man, you used to accuse me and shout at me. 
now when you are a puppy you still bark at me so that that is what buddha said so having heard this subha was uh, very upset because uh, buddha said uh, his father's name to his puppy so uh, he did not believe it and he said uh, he expressed his uh, upset to the buddha so buddha said if you don't believe this do this buddha um, uh, gave him a trick to um, uh, prove that this is uh, his father's rebirth he said you should treat or you should feed your puppy with best delicious milk rice and when he is about to sleep address speak to him in a soft voice uh, using your father's name and ask him father where have you hidden your wealth your gold your silver and all these things so so they did uh, the super did the same thing uh, when puppy uh, tries to sleep having fed him he asked father where have we hidden all the uh, wealth so this puppy uh, went up and went to different places and uh, started to dig showing the places where he had hidden <laughs> all the wealth so when uh, super uh, dig all these places he found the valuable things so <laughs> he started believing the buddha he had his trust in the buddha that is why he uh, whenever he had a question he went to the buddha and uh, got the answers from the buddha so that is the story which is uh, illustrated in the commentary not in the sutta yes we have few questions uh, and i will first uh, let me first come to nightly nightly wanted to ask yes nightly please one day i was thinking about uh, i suppose the word i was thinking of niyama which i presume would be thought of as loss of cause and effect thinking of we, we, were, we were discussing kamma and there is the chitta niyama i don't know whether you could clarify for me uh, yeah yeah uh, it is a good point actually thank you for your question now uh, Uh, i briefly um, quoted from another sutta where buddha is speaking about other reasons for the things actually in that particular sutta buddha is uh, uh, referring to the feelings of uh, the people when somebody came to the buddha and said uh, whatever one feels uh, good and bad or uh, neither good nor bad are due to karma buddha said no there are other reasons too now these niyamas so these governing laws there are five of them pancha niyamas utu niyama the seasonal order uh, bija niyama such and such uh, five niyamas so that is the way in which uh, in commentaries commentators have um, uh, explained described uh, the same thing that buddha has spoken in these suttas that there are other reasons for things to happen karma is not the only thing so kamma niyama is one of those five only karma is just only one of the five reasons there are other reasons seasons uh, utu niyama and chitta niyama our mind the way our mind behaves so mental thoughts and all these things and dhamma niyama according to the natural order and uh, bija niyama according to the um, uh, genetical load or something i think uh, the translation if you plant uh, uh, biological bi- bi- biological bi- uh, yeah. yeah biological reason if you plant yeah. uh, uh, mango uh, seed you will get a mango tree things like that so those are called the niyamas so those are found in the commentaries uh, that is the way uh, commentators have uh, described that the same thing that buddha has said in different suttas that there are other reasons for things to happen karma is just only one of them karma is not the entire only reason for everything to happen right uh, roshant fernando yes in the section on generous uh, it mentions being generous to i think bhikkhus and reclusers mm-hmm. i'm surprised it doesn't mention being generous to poor people so in our society today we think being generous to poor is perhaps one of the most important things yeah yeah correct that's a good point now here uh, uh, buddha is actually using uh, recluses and brahmins now uh, those who uh, are worthy of receiving uh, others 
things and also those who depend on uh, others now when we talk about you know dana giving we always take um, uh, yeah we 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 always um, uh, take those people as uh, the the people that we give to offer to but that does not sort of uh, decline or undermine sharing with others now buddha has in other places buddha has Uh, spoken about sharing and giving things to poor and needy people uh, in in many places in number of other places but according to the context uh, in this sutta buddha is talking about the recluses and brahmins to whom people offer give dhanas mainly right but that does not undermine that uh, sharing with uh, poor people or giving to needy people buddha has spoken enough about sharing and giving and being generous to other people who are poor needy in different places but uh, it 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 it, uh, it has to be the context actually now here buddha is uh, directly addressing the question of this person this young person so that is why uh, these terms have been used but there are our places um, buddha has spoken about sharing and giving to uh, other people poor people and needy people it has been very well uh, appreciated and encouraged in the teaching thank you uh lux lux are you uh, yeah? hi hi bante um yeah i'm wondering how many people will be whispering to their sleepy puppies tonight <laughs> um <laughs> um yeah what i wanted to ask was um um there seems to be an element of needing to be aware of what you've done um so let's take an example let's say you have two baked beans factories and there's a murderer in each one and they decide to murder somebody by putting poison into one of one can of baked beans one factory ships to mongolia and the other one ships to england and one murderer sees that he's killed somebody on the news but the one in the other factory he's killed somebody in mongolia and he doesn't know anything about it does that does a mind have to be conscious of what the implications are of what you've done for the karma to to take um, Uh, worse effect yes yeah you have to uh, see now according to those uh, five conditions um, uh, to um, for that karma for that actions to be complete uh, to mature if you see the person uh, is dead or dying that is the you know um, uh, completion of that karma but as we previously discussed that person if that person thinks uh, even though he does not see if if he knows so if he thinks somebody might have died by consuming that particular thing uh, he might still have uh, the thought in his mind that he has committed the killing right but normally according to the um, conditions and according to those conditions Uh, if one sees and if one uh, enjoys or if one experiences the uh, result of his action that is the completion of that action but still to some extent to some amount that person also has committed uh, wrong action okay the you. one who does not see the uh, person uh, dead mm-hmm. uh, dil yes okay Can you hear me, Bante? Yes, we can hear you. Bante, now you have the five niyamas, that the four other than the karma, which uh, reasons for why things happen. Now, depending on the asavas you have, like your primordial your defilements, like your uh, karma tanna, bhava tanna, and your avijja and your ditti, these things also will have an effect on on the way you think and you know your ignorance and your you know your greed, like your. karma tanna and about those things also will cause you to depending on the wholesome and wholesome will cause you to have good and bad isn't it bante uh, yeah it is correct now uh, now it is it is again uh, it connects so it it refers 
to uh, your intention, doesn't it? Because you know, if your actions are motivated and driven by one of those defilements, that can uh, affect and that can um, uh, be a bad karma. So if your actions are motivated and driven by one of the good um, uh, intention or uh, good thoughts such as generosity or kindness, if you do something out of kindness or out of gratitude, that can be a good karma. But when uh, do something out of maybe tanha or you know very extreme level of tanha, greed or whatever, that can be an unwholesome karma. That's correct. That is, I think, connect uh, connects with this uh, Buddha's interpretation of intention is karma. That is our intention. So, Bante, does that not come under chitta niyama? No, chitta niyama is a different one. That that comes under karma niyama. The intentional no. actions come under karma niyama. No, what Dil was asking. Yeah. Uh, no, I think Dil was asking uh, if you do something with defilement in your mind, if your action is uh, driven and motivated by the defilement, uh, that is unwholesome karma. That is what I understood. But the defilements are in the mind. Yeah, defilements are in the mind. But if your actions are motivated or influenced by your defilement, it can be an unwholesome karma. Uh, Bante? Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking um, a bit related to what uh, Dil was saying. Uh, now, you know the statement where arahans they don't create they they have karmas, but they don't create. It is said that they don't create new karmas um, because, of course, they have to live. If you're born, you have to live. Um, so, is that and that is because they have got rid of all their Anusia, the latent Anusia, um, Anusia, Anusia Kalesas, is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the latent tendencies. So they're pure. Um, so does that uh, mean that the karma, so if you have purified all your, well, if you, you have to get rid of, if you get rid of all your latent tendencies, then you don't create new karmas. So, and if they have good, wholesome intentions, the, I suppose Arahants do, so they don't create wholesome karmas or something. I don't know. No, no, no. Now, when when one attains arahanthood, when one uh, becomes enlightened, that person does not create or accumul accumulate any, whether good or bad karma. Ah. They perform. We call them um, uh, kriya, uh, kriya, kriya actions kriya. only. Mm. They <clears throat> those actions do not produce any new karma, be it good or bad. Yeah, definitely they don't do bad bad things. They mm. only do the good things. But mm. those good things do not produce any results because they have no any uh, craving, no any you know uh, 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 intention. Or their sansara is uh, done. So, yeah, they do only good things, but those good things do not produce any result. They are just uh, actions only. Suppose that they give a dana. Now, there are occasions where Buddha was talking about giving dana. Buddha once asked uh, this question uh, from the monks uh, mm. that if Buddha gives a dana to them or they give dana to uh, the Buddha, what is the uh, more merit making uh, deed? Mm. So, even if Buddha gave a dana to monks, Buddha does not accumulate any merit or any karma. Because he's, he has no place in the sansara for that karma to come back and give him results. So even though they do all good things, they do not produce any karma. Uh -huh. So uh, another interpretation given to enlightened being is pun punya papa pahinas. They have eliminated both good and bad actions, karmas. So is that why it's important that they, or, or they, have, they do things with equanimity? Is that the underlying... Uh, things that they do, that important thing that they, you know, to be equanimous. 
Is that yes, one? they do. Yes, they do. Not not only equanimity. Actually, it can be equanimity. It can be uh, loving kindness. So it can it can be compassion. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, not because of they have equanimity. Whatever the good thought uh, they have, be it compassion or be it kindness or be it equanimity. Mm. Uh, the thing is that they don't have uh, craving for sansara. So as long as you have craving for sansara, you do. Good karmas, right, as well as bad karmas. So they don't have craving. There's no fuel in them. Ah, right. So therefore, uh, those karmas just actions only. Lovely. Bhante, okay. can I say something? Yes, please. This uh, now in Buddha's teaching it says avijja pachya sankara that it is it is ignorance that results in action. Whether the sankaras are good or bad, or, or uh, you know the anin uh, or the imp imperturbable, any of those sankaras are done because of ignorance. Now the arahats have done away with ignorance, so they don't do any sankaras. So they don't do any uh, actions that produce uh, results. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> So does that mean that because they have um, got their wisdom, isn't it, I suppose, right view on top? Yes, right view on top because uh, they have um, uh, eradicated avijja, ignorance. Yeah. So they have right view. Mm. So they don't uh, produce uh, any uh, karmas. Sankaras. Yes. Yeah, sankaras. Yeah, yeah. Which can uh, prolong their sansara. Mm. Okay. Right, so let's uh, conclude here as we have come to the uh, closing time. And uh, so, right, so we will uh, conclude here. And I would like to thank you all for joining today's class. And we will continue this class uh, weekly at the same time, seven o'clock. And as I said, this time we will uh, take, choose, different suttas from uh, different places. And uh, just like we did today, we will uh, continue our discussion. So thank you very much for joining today's class. I wish you all, may you all be well, happy and peaceful. May you all uh, take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. 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 Thank you,